science shows that sugar can be as addictive as any other substance of use and abuse. Why? Because it too can spike dopamine and it can activate the dopamine reward pathway. And when you consume a substance that can do that in sufficient quantities over extended period of time, it can lead to a physical dependency. And that can morph into an addiction. And that means that that individual will crave that substance and consume it in ever escalating amounts. And when we pause to contemplate that, that the, the implications are stunning. This is a substance that shows up in 70 to 80% of the food sold in our grocery stores. This is a substance that has been directly and indirectly linked to every known modern chronic disease, all of them. It's probably the most inflammatory substance we could possibly eat or drink. And most of us are consuming sugar and refined carbohydrates every day, if not at every meal, not to mention our snacks. And interestingly, as far back as 1989, the World Health Organization issued international recommendations based on medical evidence that men should consume no more than nine teaspoons of added sugar per day and women no more than six, ideally less. And to put that into perspective, a single granola bar can push us past those limits. The safety of margin regarding the consumption of sugar is extremely small. And yet most of us don't even think about our sugar consumption until we get sick or we get diagnosed with a chronic disease. And this plunges us into a dilemma. Do we continue to eat our favorite foods? Or do we significantly reduce our consumption of our favorite foods? because they're potentially contributing to our illness or blocking our recovery, this puts us between a rock and a hard spot. My name is Florence and I have been researching the topic of sugar and sugar addiction recovery and I've been walking the path of sugar addiction recovery for over 30 years. And at my lowest point, I was binge eating sugar, I was overweight, I had chronic migraines, I had cystic acne, later I had stage four acne rosacea, and I was suicidally depressed. And I was in and out of doctor's offices, including the offices of psychiatrists, and I took every medication they prescribed, and my health was getting worse, not better. And lucky for me, in my early 20s, I read a copy of the book, The Sugar Blues, and the light bulb went on. I realized, oh my goodness, it's the sugar. It's the sugar that I eat literally all day, every day. It was the cereal, the toast, the pancakes, the white bread sandwiches, the chocolate bars, the Coca-Cola, the ice cream, the candy. That's what was making me sick. No one ever told me. I had no idea. I had no idea. And to make matters worse, I had no idea how hard it would be to stop eating sugar. If I had actually known then what I know now, I probably would have given up before I even started. Fortunately, I didn't. Today I have freedom from sugar and I have peace with food most of the time. I no longer have depression. I have very infrequent migraines and my skin is clear. But let me tell you, my recovery did not come quick and it did not come easy. And part of the problem was is that I started in my 20s. I started this journey in my 20s when there were very few books. I mean, other than the Sugar Blues, there were, there were no books out on sugar. And there was no internet. I didn't even own a computer. There were no coaches. There was no help whatsoever. There were 12-step there were programs for food addiction recovery just starting to come onto the scene, but I didn't know about them. So it was me against sugar. It was like David against Goliath. Fortunately, as I muddled my way forward, more and more information and books and science was coming out and support, and I got what I needed to be successful. And today I'm on a mission to help others do the same. Every year I put on a free conference called the Kick Sugar Summit, and we're just about to enter our ninth season. And it shares interviews with world experts who share the science of sugar's impact on our metabolic health and our mental health, which are very tied. We also talk about the very real problem of sugar addiction, and we share practical paths to recovery. 
We also share stories of individuals who have reversed obesity and diabetes, migraines, depression, and more, and how you can do that too. And this year, we're also tying in where trauma fits into the picture, where trauma fits into our collective overconsumption of sugar and refined carbohydrates. It's so interesting. Sugar has contributed to a global health crisis. It is not the only factor, but it is a primary factor. If we do not ditch the white powders known as sugar and flour, all the other things we are doing to get healthy and stay healthy are working against the negative effects of sugar. So let's be clear, reducing if not eliminating our consumption is priority number one for everyone, everywhere. If breaking up with sugar seems depressing and daunting to you, or if you've been diagnosed with a mental health or a metabolic health uh, disease, this is the summit for you. It is super easy to participate. Just leave your email, watch your inbox. And on behalf of everybody who puts a summit together every year, we hope you find this information life-changing. We hope you know that health is your birthright and sugar is your enemy. Make no mistake about it. See you soon.